Well, joining me now live in our Lego studio to discuss this development in much more, I have energy analyst Balazaka. Good to have you on the breakfast show today. Thank you. It's quite a kickback we are having from the independent petroleum marketers we have in the country. They cover no less than 67% of filling stations at this point in time. So their Correct. concerns are valid. And if they are having this sort of kickback, how do you think would have an interface between uh, customers coming to buy petrol and then the price templates that we have on ground, the say 162 Naira cannot work. Your reactions? I mean, I mean you, you are 100% correct. You, you, know, you know, whether we like it or not, we are going to have a day with history and posterity. Mm -hmm. And it is in our own interest to come out clean. You know, I've always said it, you know, whichever way we look at it, the way our manner we manage the sectors of our economy is, is not fair. You know, I mean, you cannot see clear-cut direction of how things are, are being managed, regardless of whether you're talking about the health, the education, the sports, you know, you know, you know oil and gas sector. It, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about leaders, we should understand that apart from our political leaders, whom we have handed over the economic and political destiny of our nations in, into their hands. Our political leaders should also understand that we have a cl classes we call business leaders, like, like the guys you're talking about. We have academic leaders. You know, we have sports leaders. We have religious leaders. We even have traditional leaders. It, 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 it is the conglomeration of these leaders that w will come up with ideas that we are going to synchronize and move this country One forward. One of the ideas that the government has also come about is looking at an improved pricing template which reflects cost uh, reflective indices that we have in the markets. Now, this is part of the issues the independent marketers are raising an eyebrow over. The fact that we are having oil prices improved. Now, it's about $40, $45 per barrel. But also looking at the devaluation of the Naira, the way the Naira is traded against the Greenback too hasn't mm -hmm. been favorable. And we still largely import. So they're running out of deficit. See, Do you see, understand see, that? Quote, quote me anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to have a national debate, a continental debate, and a global debate as far as the Nigerian oil and gas industry is concerned, and especially the downstream. Mm -hmm. The approaches are wrong. The philosophies are wrong. The models are wrong. Even the policies are confusing. What is a policy in the first place when you talk about a nation? Policies are statements that are supposed to convey the national philosophy of a nation mm. with respect to a sector and must be seen to, the, to be reflected in the political thinking of leaders. What can you say is the policy about downstream sector of the oil and gas industry? I said it before, many of us said it and people couldn't believe it. Deregulation is going to fail Nigeria, especially in the oil and gas industry. You get a peculiarities. We are an emerging economy, I will continue to say it. In fact, Nigeria is not only an emerging economy, Nigeria is a very poor country. Nigeria is an importing nation. Nigeria has a country, I mean a currency, that is very weak. Today, you cannot say so much about, I mean, the currency even has been devaluated. We have devaluation, we have what we call depreciation, and we have what we call currency regenomination. Nigerian currency is very, very weak and probably down to the ground. Yeah. We are experiencing business climate hostilities. We are also experiencing insecurity. When you look at all these indices, I tell you, the variables of the GDP will suffer. In no. situations like this, any, con any government that will apply the restructuring mechanism mm. of deregulation over commercialization and liberalization on a product mm. that affects it's the still, entire mm. fabric of the nation's economic drivers called transportation mm. or movement of goods and services, that government will not be fair. And time will mm. tell. These things will collapse and grind our economy to a halt. Let's take into consideration now the feedback we've also gotten from the average Nigerian who has to buy petrol on almost on a daily or weekly basis yes. now. They say if it were to be an upward adjustment, would have seen the marketers happy going to the bank and cashing out. But now that we have a situation whereby there's a downward revision of the uh, pricing of the product, they are hesitant. So 
At this point in time, we also have to juxtapose that with the reality on ground where the marketers are saying that, does this mean we are going back to fuel subsidy? That's not also sustainable. But let me wrap up now with the lines of engagement we've seen so far. The marketers say they were not properly communicated to in yes, terms of this memo that correct. was reached. And for the uh, Minister of the Labor place. to come out yes. to make such an announcement, it's not in its place, really. Correct. You see, everything about the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry is in this array. Mm. Anybody who, who tells you that we are getting things right is deceiving you, regardless of who that person is. And we need to understand, as I keep saying, you know, government will come and go. And when technocrats and objective technocrats who are not political talk, they talk in national interest. As we speak today, nobody will tell you what is going to happen. Whether the price of crude oil gets to $1,000 per liter, Nigeria is not going to gain from it. Even the deregulation that we, we have been so coerced to accept, the deregulation. question you have to ask is, is it a pseudo deregulation or a full deregulation? And even if it is a deregulation, whether pseudo or full, is it Import focus deregulation or internal domestication deregulation. Something is also happening. You know, we, we had discussions, we were hearing from some corners of probably leadership that, that, that the refineries will come on stream. But to the best of my knowledge, just last week, Imported or recently, no, not apart from the importation, we had that there is what we call an ITT, invitation to tender for direct sales and direct purchase, which means we are planning to go into swab now. Some people will need to to take our crude oil and give us okay, refined Mr. petroleum products. Zaka, for the lack of time now, we just have less than a minute. I would just want a thought on the PIB. We are wrapping up the year. What do you think we should be doing I'm, in terms I'm of I'm very this sorry to tell you that I'm talking on probably a national television. The PIB, as far as I am concerned, I stand to be contradicted, is going to almost be what medical doctors call a DOE, dead on arrival. And the, mm. the reason is very simple. If you were to be a chief executive of a company and you were sent to Nigeria for the past 10 10 years, and you are now telling your bosses that you have been waiting in Nigeria for a regulatory framework to be put in place for the past 10 years, wouldn't your company fire you? Even if you were to be an investor and you collected loans or you are, you are using equity of yours and you collected some loans from other places, you know, and you have been waiting for regulatory reforms to be able to invest in a given sector, wouldn't your company go into liquidation? Mm. So it is very clear. It's clear. Thank you very much for your time on the show Thank today, Balazakai. Okay. It's been a pleasure. And hopefully we see a clearer picture in terms of the direction we have for the oil and gas sector in the we country. We pray so. We really pray so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well,